Right, hello there ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be working on this PlayStation 4 Pro, which has been sent in. This PlayStation has been sent in because it's not accepting discs, and there's a few things that could possibly cause this. The most common cause on this particular model is the disc drive controller, and that's going to be the Renesas or the MediaTek chip, depending on which revision board it is. So, we're going to take a look, we're going to see what we can do, but while I've got your attention, if you are new to the channel and you enjoy this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you might be looking a little bit more popular by hitting subscribe and turning on the bell notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. I'm also streaming on Twitch, so if you want to check me out over there, you can do. There's a link in the video description. And I don't just stream repairs on Twitch, I also stream games as well. So if you want to come and hang out on Xbox, play a little bit of Call of Duty. I'm not a very good player, but we like to have fun every now and again. So with that being said, let's take a look at this. So one of the causes of the disk drive not accepting disk is obviously the disk drive itself. The other cause would be the fuses on the disk drive. And the other cause is usually the Renesas chip, which kind of sucks because if it's a Renesas chip or, as I said, the MediaTek, it's an fix because it's not replaceable. So we're going to take a look. We're going to see what's going on. Hopefully we can get this thing to work and hopefully we can get some money. Okay, it doesn't matter whether I'm offering up an Xbox or a PS4 disc, it's not taking a disc at all. I'm just going to make sure it does go to a white light before I turn it off. And it does indeed. So what we'll do, we'll take it apart, we'll see what's going on and hopefully get this thing fixed. So the first thing I'm noticing is that... Someone's already been in here, and we've got a base screw missing. So, something to take into consideration is that someone's been messing. And they obviously didn't care enough to put the screw back. So, did they care enough to actually take care of the system when they took it apart? And screw missing, screw missing, screw missing, screw missing, screw missing, 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 missing. Yeah, all right. There's loads of screws missing. Of course there is, because nothing is ever as it should be. Never mind. We'll take it apart, like I said. We'll see what we can do about getting it fixed. Hopefully, this isn't the Renesas that's failed. Hopefully, it's not something that the customer's done. Hopefully, it's something simple, like the fuses. If it's fuses, great. If it's not, then we're in trouble. So, I thought I'd film this, because... The PS4 Pro, the disk drive doesn't really die that often. It's more common on the PS4 Slim 2216 models. And that's usually F6202, which fails. Normally due to a disk drive issue where the disk drive has got stuck. Or if someone has jammed something in there. So I'll fast forward through this boring bit. Because... We don't want to see a load of screws being unscrewed unless you're after ASMR. In which case, I suggest you check out Restoration and Relaxation on YouTube. I'll leave a link to his channel in the video description. It's a great channel, especially if you just want to relax a little bit and watch some repairs without talking. It is the ASMR vibe. It's kind of nice. So I'll leave a link to his channel in the video description. Okay, all right. Can anyone see what's wrong with that picture? <laughs> I hate seeing that. It's upside down. The clamp is upside down, which means there's going to be nowhere near enough pressure being put on the APU. Which means it's probably going to sound like a jet engine. It's meant to be that way. Not that way. Because there's a nipple there. <laughs> I said nipple. Anyway, there's a nipple there. And there's also a curve in the clamp. And the curve in the clamp causes the nipple to be touching this part here. Hence why there's a little dot in the middle. And then when you screw this down, it puts pressure on. And slightly bends the clamp. And he puts enough pressure on so as it's making a good contact with the APU. 
All right, power supply out. Motherboard is ready to come out. And then we can inspect the motherboard. Notice how I take it out with the power connector still in there. It saves me risking damage in it. All right, so this is the NVB004 motherboard. And if we flip the motherboard around so that it's on the back, we could have done this with it still in the case, but we can't solder while it's in the case because we'll melt it. Let's pop under the scope. And if we take a look on the back of the board here, we'll see that we've got F6201 and F6202. Now if we take a look at F6202, it doesn't look great, does it? There's been some poking and prodding. It looks like we've had some of the conformal coating burn away or something and also there's a little weird spot in the middle of the fuse as well which is kind of odd so let's just test these fuses so f6202 is responsible for the disk drive sensor to detect when a disk is inserted so let's just check from one side to the other and we get no continuity but we do there So that weird spot there is actually, if you listen to the sound, I'm not sure if it's going to come across on the cam on the microphone. It's actually a burn mark. It's actually a burn mark in the fuse. So we're going to get that removed and we're going to replace it with a working one. I'm going to use some hot air, 420 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow. There we go. There's the old one removed. Uh, before I drop a new one on, I'm going to tin these pads. So, just use a little bit of flux. Remember, we need to use flux every time we solder because it helps the solder to flow and it gives us some nice shiny joints as well. There we go, some beautiful looking joints there. So now I'm going to grab a brand new fuse. I buy these from AliExpress. They're around about, I believe, £18 for 50 That's it. That might seem expensive, and it is. It is quite expensive because if you were to buy these off something like DigiKey, you would get them a lot cheaper. However, I don't know the rating of them. So when I buy these, I buy them from AliExpress because it saves me having to know the rating. I believe they are three amp. I think I'm not sure. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hazard a guess. But I believe I'm three amp, but I don't know the exact rating, so I'll just buy them off AliExpress. But when you think that one job would pay for this two to three times over for the entire bunch, then it's still worth it. Make sure that we've got a nice connection. That end in the middle is for nice. And then while the board is still warm, I'm just going to clean off the flux with isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. And that will evaporate itself, but I will help it a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Alright, so while we're still in this area, I'm going to test a couple more fuses. So F6201 is the disk drive motor, so the one that spins the disk. I'm going to make sure that's good. 
And this, I believe, is a current sense resistor. And that's good as well. Okay, so everything else appears to check out on that circuit. I don't see any, more, any other signs of damage. So in terms of the board, it should be good to go. And the reason that I say in terms of the board is because that fuse went with a little bit of a bang. So that's got me a little bit concerned about the disk drive itself. So usually I would say it's just because someone has put in a disk and got it stuck. But that went with a bit of a bang. They don't usually end up with a hole in them. And that one did. So I'm going to inspect the disk drive as well. But I need to take it apart to clean it fully anyway. So I'm going to be inspecting the disk drive as well. That's nice and clean. I'll just add some fresh thermal paste here. Ready for when I install the motherboard back into the case. But first of all, I'm going to drop this to one side. And I'm going to remove the housing, or rather remove the midframe. And I'm going to see what goes on inside the disk drive. I want to clean the heatsink out anyway. So I'll see what's going on with the disk drive. It looks like someone's already messed with the disk drive. Half the screws are missing again. All right, the heatsink is clean, so that's fine. Um, the fan as well, could do with a little brush down. I'll, uh, I'll give it a little blast out with some air. Half the screws are missing, and unfortunately, I don't have replacements for the PS4 Pro. I don't have any replacement screws at all, apart from the Torx T9s. All right, so that's had a blast out with air. So let's inspect this disk drive. Actually, first, let's just clean this. There we go. Let's get rid of some of that dust. This is basically a complementary cleaning, which I do on all devices. It doesn't get a thorough clean, but they do get a fairly good clean. Good enough to the point where it's not going to overheat. Oh, you're missing that lung screw as well. But I basically clean out every single console. That's not the right screw. <laughs> this just gets worse and worse. So I want to find out what's actually happened. Oh, no, we're not missing the lung screw. Sorry, my bad. So I want to find out what's actually happened to the disk drive. All right, well, I can already see that it's in poor condition. Yeah, the disk drive is in pretty poor condition here. I'm just going to clean out the disk drive a bit. I'm going to clean the rollers as well. So for the rollers, I need to take them out. And I'm going to take a cotton swab with some IPA. And I'm just going to basically rub around with IPA and the cotton swab to get rid of any dust on there. That should bring them back to an acceptable state. Let's just give them a clean. And then I can put them back in. A little bit of a jump cut there. My, uh, my phone is going nuts with notifications. And that's why I usually have them silent. But for some reason, they've re-enabled themselves. All right. So let me just check over this disk mechanism. That appears good. Let's make sure it... Yep. Okay. It does indeed move freely. So I'm thinking maybe this just got stuck and it just overheated the fuse. So I'll get this back together. Um, once it's back together, I'll give it a test and hopefully it's going to work now. I'm going to find some thermal pads as well, but I'll do that off video. That's not a problem. The thermal pads are very, very important. They not only protect the motherboard from overheating 
or rather the ram from overheating but they also protect it from impact as well so it kind of softens the blow if you get any impact and time and time again i've seen damage ram because of impact and it's usually caused when there's no thermal pad there so it does act as a kind of like a cushion as well as doing as well as serving a purpose for cooling so i don't recommend ever putting these back together fully if you don't have thermal pads on every single ram i see they are there for a reason and believe me if sony oh i forgot the fan oh damn it <laughs> if sony didn't have to spend that extra 10 cents on thermal pads believe me they wouldn't 10 cents 10 cents over 10 million units is a million saved so yeah trust me they, they wouldn't spend it if they didn't have to i can't believe i forgot the uh oh that was the perfect amount of thermal paste Steve from Tronic Fix would be proud. I can't believe I just left the fan disconnected though. I can because I do it quite often, to be honest. I'm not going to pretend I don't. <laughs> All right, there was only one fan screw. Like I said, I don't have replacements for PS4 Pro. I don't have any replacements for PlayStation 4 in terms of those long silver screws. Don't have any for the PS4 Slim either anymore. I've run out. I only tend to get them when I strip down a console that I can't fix. Alright, well I don't need to replace the thermal paste because there's enough on it. Let's just drop those there for a second while I drop the hard drive in. So, like I said, I'm going to put this back together enough for testing because I do want to try and keep videos as short as I can. People seem to like the shorter videos, so if I can keep them below 25 minutes or so, then, you know, that's, uh, that's a win for everyone. It's less editing for me. It's shorter, more to the point videos for you guys. And everyone's happy. Alright. That'll do for now. Let's get the power supply back in. Here we go. What do you think? Is it going to work? Turns on, of course. Let's take a HDMI cable. Destroy drive. Eject button works. Or at least... It detects it being pressed. And it's time for the moment of truth. Here we go. Let's go. Okay, for some reason, it says can't start the PS4. Okay, that's weird. So, does this need... A hard drive replacement? Hmm. I'm not sure. But that says it can't access the PS4. Which is really strange. That's not been reported on the ticket. So let's just have a quick look at this hard drive and what's going on with it. Wait, did I not plug it in right? I'm not sure. Alright, well it's got one of my discs in. I'm going to press and hold the power button. I'm going to wait for it to turn off. And then I'm going to turn it back on again. Okay, let's see what happens. There we go. It's loading. I don't think I plugged it in right. That's uh, a little bit embarrassing.
Alright, right, so I've got a controller at the ready. Ah, cannot start the PS4. So it wants a system update file. So that's probably why it got sent in. So what I'll do, I'll download the software onto here and then I'll reinstall the system software and take it from there. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna let this update run and in about three, four minutes, it should be done. Uh, we should be able to test the disk drive, make sure it works and call it good, hopefully. It does sound like it's loading. So basically when I put the disk in, it's spinning up and it's not spinning up and then spinning back down. It does sound like it's trying to load a disk, but obviously the software is not there to actually install it, which is perfectly normal for the PS4. Even in safe mode, it will try and load the disk because it's the laser what's doing the work. So it'll try and load the disk, but obviously there's just no software for it to install too. So it does sound normal and it takes a disk, it ejects a disk, absolutely fine. So it seems fine, but I still need to make sure that it's going to install the game and play it as well. And also I need to make sure it updates fully because that's one of the issues that you run into when you've got no disk drive. So when F6202 fails, you can get a 35888-0 error and that will stop you from updating the system. And if the hard drive fails, then it basically bricks the system. So I'll let this update run. It shouldn't take too much longer now and hopefully it's all working. And there is the software installed. Happy days. So I'm just going to make sure that it works. And there we go, he's loaded the game and he's installed the software as well. That's fantastic, that means that my job is done. Just going to make sure he actually loads into the game and it doesn't give us an error code. It shouldn't do, it should be absolutely fine, but this appears to be working. And there we go, it loads into the game absolutely fine and everything appears to be working absolutely fine as well. So that is going to be it, that is job done, I am a happy boy now. And I'm sure the customer will be too because now they can use their console again, it's on their update again and it should be absolutely fine. I couldn't find any reason why the fuse blew, probably just a disc that got stuck and it ended up overheating the fuse I'm assuming. I can't see any other reason why it would have done that, but it is what it is, and just by replacing the fuse, it seems to be working fine. So, that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. I will always do my best to reply. I do enjoy reading and replying to your guys' comments. And if you want to see more repair videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so that you're notified whenever I upload. If you want to organise your own repair, you can do so getting in touch using the website address in the video description. You can see price lists, you can book in your repair, or you can get in touch using the contact page. If you want to support the channel, you can become a Patreon supporter using the link in the video description. You can become a channel member using the join button down below the video, or you can become a Twitch Prime subscriber absolutely free by following me on Twitch and then linking your Amazon Prime account to Twitch. That all helps out the channel a bunch and channel members and Patreon supporters get early access to videos as well. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.